Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I, I get oh, um, just you start. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So the reason why we started uh, GNA myopathy research is that the, our mentor mentor uh, is Dr. Nonaka, who is actually the one who identified who first report uh, GNA myopathy. Uh, he actually originally reported this disease as distal myopathy with rim vacuoles. Yes. And uh, sorry, I just I'm going to stop you. Sorry. Can you just can you speak to Shippi? Yeah, look at the me. Okay, like this. Yeah. Okay, don't no, not no, like this. Okay. No, it's okay. I, I will talk to you. Okay. So from the start, from the beginning. Is it from yes. the beginning? Okay. So, you can tell me. Yeah. It's okay. Actually, yeah. All right. <laughs> so. Uh, <clears throat> so we started uh, GNA myopathy research uh, because uh, our mentor, uh, Dr. Nonaka, is the one who identified and who reported uh, GNA myopathy for the first time yes, in the world, actually. And uh, he originally reported this uh, disease as distal myopathy with rim vacuoles. And uh, for some reason, we have many patients, probably we have more patients than other countries, probably most likely because of the uh, common mutation we have. For this reason, we have well, a bunch of uh, cases uh, in our laboratory, and I mean the, uh, the samples, because our lab functions as a, a referral center for muscle disease in Japan, so many samples are sent to us. And among them, we have a significant number of cases with uh, GNA myopathy. This is why we wanted to uh, elucidate the mechanism and also, of course, uh, wanted to develop a therapy. Well, uh, causative gene, we, of course, we wanted to uh, find the causative gene, but, well, fortunately or, or unfortunately, uh, uh, Israeli group, uh, Professor uh, Mitrani Rosenbaum, uh, she did a beautiful work and identify the causative gene, and which was uh, now we know GNE gene. Yes, and then, uh, well, so after the identif identification of causative gene, now we wanted to be the first one to develop therapy. Yes, so we started, uh, you know, well, uh, research to develop therapy for GNE uh, myopathy. So, well, as uh, I mentioned in my talk today, well, we, our hypothesis is that because the mutation is in the gene encoding enzyme, well, which is the key enzyme to produce uh, gene, uh, sialic acid. So sialic acid should be decreased, and this should be the cause of the disease. This was our hypothesis. And based on our hypothesis that we actually showed that in patient cells, in, pa in uh, muscle cells from the patient, actually sialic acid level is decreased and also sialylation is decreased. We clearly showed it. And just by giving sialic acid, this hyposilylation was recovered, yes. So if this is the cause of the disease, if hypothyroidation is the cause of myopathy, in a sense, we have already treated patients, right? So then, of course, then the next step is to show this, to uh, show the, the like proof of concept in animal models. For this reason, actually, uh, several laboratories started uh, making uh, animal models. But for some reason, we were the only one who, uh, which was able to uh, create a myopathy phenotype, yes, a model with myopathy phenotype. And using this phenotype, uh, model mice, uh, we gave, of course, sialic acid and also its precursor manac, and also the conjugate form of sialic acid. Uh, sialic lactose. We so tried three types of sialic acid metabolites. And, well, surprisingly, all of them showed, uh, well, sub, well, 
you know, the, the efficacy was so clear. So we actually gave those agents before they show any phenotype. And we waited until uh, they show the phenotype in uh, untreated mice. But treated mice, none of them actually showed any problem. Mus no muscle weakness and no muscle atrophy and no uh, you know, pathology, pathological changes. Pathological hallmark of this disease is rim vacuoles, but n no rim vacuole at all. So it means that by just by giving sialic acid, well, the disease mechanism can be completely shut down. So this indicates that this disease is actually caused by sialic acid deficiency. Yes. So for this reason, uh, yes, we tried to uh, initiate a clinical trial. Yes. But unfortunately, it was very difficult, in Japan, at least in Japan. And the patients group in, uh, in Japan, they did a great job. Yes. And Finally, uh, we were able to conduct phase one clinical trial. But unfortunately, we used simple sialic acid, which can be absorbed very quickly and very well absorbed. But unfortunately, this can also be excrete, excreted very quickly, yes. So for this reason, the uh, sialic acid level cannot be maintained very well in, in the body, in the patient's body. In the meanwhile, the American company uh, started a clinical trial using a slow release form of sialic acid. Yes. And they were uh, successful uh, in phase one and also phase two. Yes. Right. And uh, so the phase three clinical trial was done. And also in Japan, uh, uh, Japanese company followed their uh, phase three clinical trial. So we actually did the uh, similar type of, uh, actually, exactly, actually we used exactly the same protocol, even though the size of the uh, studies was small. Yes, yes. So the, in, in Japan, we, we had phase two, three study, and outside Japan, especially in the US and uh, Europe, they did a uh, phase three clinical trial. But probably, as uh, all of you know, that uh, phase three clinical trial uh, was not successful. Well, there are many um, possible reasons, but yes. But still, I do think uh, sialic acid will show some efficacy, probably if you use different type of uh, tri uh, di uh, trial design, yes. And also, uh, at this moment, at least in the United States, uh, NIH group started um, MANA clinical trial. So uh, per seemingly, they are confident that to show the efficacy by their clinical trial. Of course, it will take um, some time to see their result, but at least for American patients, they do have some hope. But the problem is patients outside the US. There is no ongoing clinical trial. So this is a problem, yes. For this reason, uh, we are scheduled to have uh, ENMC workshop later this year. Then we are uh, planning to discuss uh, you know, further clinical trial yes, a plan with other experts, yes. Dr. could you tell us like in brief um, why it is important to have these kind of meetings like they should take on scientific meetings? Right. Um, first of all, for patients, probably, um, yeah, uh, well, this is my personal impression, but, but GNA myopathy patients, many of you are very bright, yes. I know doctors and the lawyers, teachers, you know. Maybe I may be biased, but, but I think many of you are very bright. But still, many patients often ask me whether stem cell therapy is efficacious or not. And scientifically speaking, 
there is no evidence at all. So I, I don't think any of expert will uh, recommend stem, ther ther stem cell therapy at this moment. Yes. So I, I think this type of meeting is very helpful to let you know what kind of well, ex well therapy you can try or what kind of therapy you should ignore. Yes, of course you have liberty to do anything, yes, but at least you can know current uh, understanding, yes. I think th this will be helpful for you. And also this type of meeting is helpful for uh, scientists and also medical experts because uh, those experts are scattered around in the world, right, so, and we don't have uh, so many chances uh, to discuss with each other. Yes. So this will be a, a precious opportunity to exchange our opinions and also to talk about uh, possible future therapeutic options. Yes. So in terms, and also we can do some brainstorming. And this, I'm sure this will be helpful yes, to further uh, to change and the situation. Just quickly, one last question, Doctor. What would you say has been like the biggest highlight of your career with GNE so far? Well, well, in terms scientifically speaking, I think the uh, the production of the uh, animal, successful production of uh, model mouse, was and also the showing the efficacy of sialic acid and manac and also sal lactose using our model mice was the highlight uh, of our research. But, well, for myself, uh, I had a chance to work with patients, GNU myopathy patients, especially uh, Japanese patients. Well, I, well to be, honestly, I had never had chance to work, you know, uh, with patients like that, and we often uh, met uh, and discussed you know, how we can go further, you know. And this was a great experience for me, and as a, well, as a researcher and as a doctor, yes. And this, they actually encourage me a lot and stimulate me a lot, yes. So of course, still, I don't think we can say, well, uh, we were successful because still drug is not available. It was, we are still on the way. But with the uh, enthusiasm of among patients, yes, I think we will make it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a wonderful message to end this thing with. I think that's really nice. And thank you so much for taking time out. I okay. want to keep you actually from this session, <laughs> so that's why I think we should wrap it up. Okay. So thank you so much. Okay,